If we have a moving object, we can calculate its kinetic energy from a half mv squared, and its momentum p is equal to mv. Now we can also rearrange this to say that v is equal to p divided by m. And what I can also do now is actually square both sides. So we can say that v squared is equal to p squared over m squared. Okay. Now what we can then do in this equation over here is we can replace this v squared over here with p squared over m squared. So if I write that out, we can then say that the kinetic energy is equal to a half times the mass, and then v squared is equal to p squared divided by m squared. Now it's looking a bit messy at the moment. We've got an m divided by m squared, and that means I'm going to take the m away from there, I'm going to cancel the two there. And we can rewrite this as the kinetic energy is equal to p squared divided by 2m. So what we can now do is relate the kinetic energy of an object to its momentum. But this is not the only way to derive that equation. And all we're doing when we're deriving new equations is we're starting with something we know, we're doing a bit of rearranging, we're doing something like this where we may be replacing one term with something else, and that's the answer that we get in this case. But there's another way that we can do this. Again, we're going to start with the equations for kinetic energy and momentum. But this time I'm going to start with this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to say that 2ek is equal to mv squared. Now the other thing we can do is we can multiply both sides by m. Whatever we're doing to this side of the equation, we do to the other. So we can also say that 2m times the kinetic energy, ek, is equal to m squared v squared. Now the other thing I'm going to do over here is just like we did last time, uh, we're going to square both sides. We can say that p squared is equal to m squared v squared. And we can now replace this m squared v squared with just p squared like we had over here. So I'm just going to be putting this into that part of the equation. So 2m ek is equal to p squared. And then finally, I'm just going to make ek the subject to say that the kinetic energy is equal to p squared over 2m. Now, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Effectively, what we're doing is we're starting with two different equations. We're combining them together. And I think this is the thing about physics. There's not just one way to get to the right answer. As long as you are consistently applying the same rules, you can get to the same end point through a variety of different methods. So the kinetic energy is equal to the momentum squared divided by 2m 